Hi guys, it is Theory Thursday, and I wanted to talk about Tourette's prior to Tourette's. Or, in other words, historical examples of tick disorders that we can look back on now and theorize as being potentially uh, Tourette's syndrome or a tick disorder. Mangoes. So, obviously, Tourette's didn't just start existing in the late 1800s when it was discovered. But how do we know if something was a tick disorder or if it wasn't? The best example, the best tool we have to use is um, historical written accounts. Obviously, we don't have movies to look at. We don't have home videos to go, oh yeah, look at that. That's definitely a tick. So, uh, the best we have is the written accounts. So, without further ado, some written accounts about um, various people who may or may not have had Tourette's. Number one, in the late 1500s, there was a book written called Malleus Maleficarum, or Witch's Hammer. This is the best translation in English. And in this book, uh, there was a description of a priest who was described as being possessed by a demon or by Satan. And it talked about um, he would stick his tongue out, he had, um, would say inappropriate things, and there were a couple other ones, but when asked if he could stop, he couldn't. He would say, no, I can't do anything about this. So that is kind of the first accepted starting point of, this is probably an example of a tick disorder. Uh, and obviously throughout that time, there, were, there was a lot of witch hunting going on. And so my theory is that there were probably a fair number of cases of witches who had tick disorders or Tourette syndrome. Uh, Salem Witch Trials? Maybe. Could be. The two girls who started the whole thing um, were related. And the theory is that Tourette's is... Ha, bananas. Is a... Um, is an inherited condition. So the two girls were cousins and they were fairly young age and they were together a lot. It's possible that they had Tourette syndrome. I can buy that. Could be. Mangoes. Bananas. Uh, I've, I've read a lot of stories, or seen a lot of stories on YouTube, people talking about when their tics first started affecting them. And um, a lot of the stories involve like kind of an inciting incident. Uh, so I could buy that the two girls got into something and got, you know, excited and set both of them off started their Tourette syndrome. I could buy that. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying I could buy that. So, we get up to the 1700s, um, where we find a couple of historical figures uh, who have been theorized as having Tourette syndrome. Uh, one is Samuel Johnson, and basically, based on his friend's writing of Johnson and facial tics he had and things he would do, uh, pretty much it's a it's a practically an established fact at this point that uh, Samuel Johnson did have Tourette syndrome. Uh, there's also a theory about Wolfgang Mozart having Tourette syndrome based on uh, different facial expressions he made and other things that he did. So I think I think Samuel Johnson is pretty much accepted at this point, like hands down. Uh, Mozart is still kind of a theory speculation. So there's a couple. There are a couple more examples. Bananas, bananas, mangoes. Hello, turpentine. That's new. <laughs> uh, so then we get up to the 18 or the 1800s, where we finally started getting uh, some interesting, really like paying attention to what was going on and not just saying, oh, hysteria, witch, whatever. So then we get to where we switch from theory to actual observed science. 
or observed uh, patients. Uh, and this is where we find people like the Marquise de Dampierre, who was a pretty wealthy woman who suffered from Tourette's like symptoms. And she ended up being one of the nine patients that Tourette studied um, in order to come to his conclusions about tic disorders. There's a lot of theory and speculation on the earlier cases, you know, what what was actually Tourette's, what was something else, what was something they ate. Um, for example, like the Salem Witch Trials, there's a theory that they had all eaten some bad rye. But as far as all of that goes, it's really just anybody's guess at this point and just a whole lot of a lot of speculation and theory. Um, one thing that really struck me, kind of hit me a little bit hard, <laughs> going off subject a little bit here, reading all these stories about bananas, about people with, um, who potentially had Tourette's, who were, um, condemned as witches. Uh, kind of struck me hard because, you know, I'm, we live in a day and age where it's understood now that Tourette's is not a psychological thing, or it is a problem in the brain. Uh, bananas, hello. Mangoes, carrots, hello. Turpentine. stories about uh, people from the past who uh, potentially did have treads, who were condemned as witches. Uh, it's because, you know, we live in an age now where we understand that it's a problem with the brain. It's not something psychological. It's not possession. Uh, and I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> uh, and even now, you know, it's still getting misdiagnosed. But, um, and, you know, and, you know, 50 years ago, it was still being misdiagnosed, but I feel like now, we're really starting to slowly start to unravel it a little bit at a time. And, but, just looking back on all of the people who potentially were, um, you know, persecuted for being witches or being possessed or whatever, who, you know, potentially had a tic disorder, or something along those lines. It's, it hit me really hard because it's not just that they were misunderstood, because like that's gonna happen anytime. Like if I go in a grocery store and I'm having a bad tick day, I'm gonna be misunderstood. People are gonna look at me weird. Hello. Bananas. That's part of life. So that didn't bother me so much as just the idea that it wasn't just that other people misunderstood them, it was that they had misunderstood it themselves. Because when you're dealing with something like this, it does feel like you know, you're not in control of your body. It feels to an extent like somebody else is controlling you, like you have a force inside of you. Because of that pressure, the premonitory urge, you know, it feels like you, know, you can't control yourself. It feels like somebody else is controlling you. <laughs> And in that time period, that was the only thing they had to go on was, you know, this is a spiritual issue. So even like the example of the priest in the 1400s, he thought himself that he was possessed by a demon because that was the only thing he had to describe it. So just the idea that, that these people uh, didn't understand themselves and felt that they were possessed because that was... That was the only information they had. That really hit me hard, and yeah, I had kind of a heavy moment about that. So, that's all for today. Uh, not really so much theory as history, but hope you enjoy it. I uh, will catch you later. I've got a video I'm gonna be working on soon about the uh, somewhat amusing random vocal tics I've been having. So, uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye.